In today's episode of Farm All Fanatic, we're going to get ready for actually the next video beyond this one. I got to get the cold mulcher out. I got to get some shovels on it uh, and just some other happenings that are going on. I'll, I'll let you look at the clover after I mowed it. For you clover people, you might be impressed. I don't know. I am. And then uh, I'm going to reveal my favorite tractor on the farm. Tractor Tour 2024. It shouldn't leave you wanting for more. But yeah, actually, we're red guys. We're greedy. We want them all. Boom. Well, you, most of you saw that I... Well, no, no, not most of you. Probably about a third of you saw that I put a new seat on the 826 once and for all. And I haven't got to test it out yet, so... I'm going to get the 826 out, get the cold mulcher hooked up. And I got some work to do to that before I take it to the field. And this could be the tractor that pulls it. I know, it's the tractor. I'm not against pulling it, that's for sure. Well, let's do a cold start on a 75 degree day. We don't really have a choice. What you plant you need good seed to soil contact and that in my book requires a cold mulcher we gotta get this sucker out of the weeds i do have shovels to put on it about 27 to be exact and i can tell you so far that seat it's chiang kai check well i'm not even remotely embarrassed to show you this is the hardest implement i have to hook up and that's <laughs> i mean a four by six and and a jack and you're there but yeah that's this this goes all back to the one tractor one implement deal right here so let's go let's show Kiwani 12 foot cold mulcher and it's missing the shovels. I did order them and I do have them. It should have tandem walkers. It don't. It don't. And I never made it have such because I'd never planned on taking it down the road. The only time I've ever taken this down the road was when I bought it and I pulled it home with a Ford Ranger and that was a treat. A real treat. But yeah, it's in pretty good shape. I think one of the bearings is getting suspect. But I just pump a little extra grease in her and she rolls, so yeah. Missing one of the, all oh, the sea tines, I guess you'd call those. And, uh, but he makes up for it up there. And I usually, when I call the mulch, I hit it twice. And then it's ready to plant, you get a good, that's what I was trying to tell people when I'm plowing, all I'm doing is making a seed to soil contact surface. That's it, I'm not trying to one up you, I'm not trying to, you know, Wow, an inch deeper than you, man. But yeah, nice to see her out of the weeds. Some people are like, well, when are you gonna paint it? Well, I, when I got this, the paint was beautiful on it. They have it all John Deere'd up. And I believe it does have a John Deere cylinder on it. Oddly, but hey, you use what you got and that's what they did. But my thing is, is as long as the paint was good, why not keep deer in the rear? But now the paint ain't good. I'm a little more motivated to get her sandblasted and painted the right color that's not Kiwani color but yeah let's regulators mount up hey 
and that was last night one inch and I think we got it all in about four hours and I was going to show you the shovels if I know there's other guys out there running these Kiwanis I see them at sales and guys are buying them so if you ever want to replace the shovels there's your part number right there I guess it's 10996 fiber where did I get this oh agri supply everybody always asks where I get stuff I'm not sponsored so I usually don't give shout outs to companies because my services are to be sold not told sorry not sorry you know they're not shouting me out okay and I should have the hardware in the in the barn but yeah yeah pretty nice should be 27 of them there well I'm making progress I got I don't know five of them on they're pretty much universal when I bought these I bought these years ago and I don't know if I paid six bucks for them they're probably double now I would guess those are seven sixteenths bolts it's what I had um, two inch 14 thread yeah it works it'll hold the stupid things on there you know because if you don't have these on there then you're just gonna you're basically just packing called a packing not called a mulching all right they're all on there now all i don't know 27 but let me show you something i had to take a break remember i just showed you it was at one inch we got a monsoon a quarter inch and it come down good grief probably we got that in probably 30 40 minutes this is why you can't feed your cat when your birds are free ranging i mean they're going ballistic that's melvin's food i thought it was a girl it's gonna be midnight but i found out he's a boy and he's afraid of chickens <laughs> get in there melvin get you some jeez chase their butts right out or i will well i'm finally gonna pull this steering wheel off of here before i make the rest of this video and uh got something to grab around the back of the wheel here and then two bolts will go right down through here i'll center punch this i got about 1200 foot pounds right there on the three quarter inch milwaukee and she coming off of there one way or another the objective is i want to get this off of here i did buy a new boot here too but i want to get this painted this i don't know throttle plate whatever paint it up and make it look nice i got a pen that i used for the shifter plate and go for broke and uh one day we got to peel this down find out if she's a goldie goldilocks all right first kick of the pig I don't like the fact I'm not in that center hole. That bothers me. Huh. For some reason, it is not. like it's not bringing this up it's just turning inside there okay so we rip her out oh well that ain't gonna work and this this is course thread I believe yeah yeah so basically what happened this is a Pittsburgh polar kit the okay so this piece these two pieces and the collar here all came in a kit well the missing piece mysteriously out of the kit is this so i tried to replace it with i don't know polar off a or a center bolt off another polar well, and i got close this is coarse thread this is fine thread so i couldn't use it that's coarse thread but it was too it's too big around and I just got online, ordered a whole nother kit. 
and this will be the parts kit. You know, I have extra pieces for when these pieces come or the other pieces come up missing. But yeah, I mean, I could still steer the tractor. It's just going to be a few more days till that new kit gets here, and I'll dry that sucker right off of there. I'm sure it'll come off. I've been spraying it right along right there, and once the rust weld or whatever's really holding it on there breaks, that, that it's coming off. Well, we're three days into regrowth after plowing it with King Kong Cub. <laughs> I like my alliteration, but good grief. Seed head coverage already, and I literally just mowed it. Here's where I clean the coop. A lot of you watch that video. I pulled it with the 826, drug it out here, and of course nothing's gonna grow there because it's it needs a year to really compost essentially. But what will grow here eventually will be even better clover than this. But yeah, looking good. Nothing beats mowing as far as keeping a clover crop going. And it, it's just remarkable like i said this all stems from planting that corner up there about two years ago it was just a bald spot and i threw seed in it and it's now taken over and there's white and there's i don't know i'm seeing like a i guess that'd be a red clover huh so it, it, there is a slight mixture it's mostly i think this is people would call it white dutch but i think it's actually ladino clover and i can't take it anymore <clears throat> this lifter gasket is shot shot it's probably the original i don't know <clears throat> sometimes you can get away with just tightening these screws up i'm not even going to bother i just bought another one and i use the indian head what permatex on there to get this all cleaned up and looking decent i mean yeah rust prevention program going on but don't need it all the time and don't need it right here that's for sure so yep but this is the old 756 and gas or she hadn't seen any action yet this year hmm that action's going to take place i've been asked over the years what's your favorite tractor well it was pretty easy to come up with that answer when i had like two I don't even know how many I got, to be honest with you. I'm going to walk around with you and count them. I think 12, 13, or 14. But I think it's an even number, so I think it's 12 or 14. <laughs> and today I'm going to reveal my favorite one currently on the farm. It's not a place I really wanted to go because first, second, and third are pretty tight. There is a first right now. Well, we got the 826. We all know about that, unless you're a new viewer, and you could be. 102 engine horsepower. Somebody's like, I don't want to hear engine horsepower. I want PTO horsepower only. I'm not running a mixer. Okay, so PTO horsepower isn't relevant to me. Engine is. I don't know how much is that the engine. Yeah, it's going to reduce down at the drawbar. I get it. So maybe drawbar. But I always go engine horsepower. I credit the full Monty, not what's in the rear. And it hasn't disappointed. This this tractor has been everything I've hoped that it was going to be and more. The 400, you saw me buy that this year. So basically, nose to nose, they face each other. And these are two new bought tractors this year. Just stunners, man. And I'm not tooting my own whistle by saying that because I own them, but they just are. 826, 456, you've seen videos of me using this already and uh you know quite frankly I, it, it, it's high on the list oh the super mta i got this a couple of years ago and i got it home and i just went through it i took all the sheet metal off of it i had it off probably for a good two weeks um belts all new electric muffler alternator i did i went one wire i just went through the tractor, flushed the full service on it, toolbox, new lights, new tires, new skins on the rear, and it worked out really good. Power steering, the Charlin, the hidden kind, not the Baylin. And then last but not least, I put the 5010 John Deere up there. All the farm all a slash workbench. <laughs> it's what's 
honestly, I put that new mag on there and, and it ran like a top and just like a champ. Of course, got this wire off here for now. Um, I'm getting fuel, I'm not getting spark. And that's a brand new mag out from Brillman. I did not spare an expense. And you know, when you're when you're not sparing an expense on a mag, you're looking at between four and five hundred bucks. I, I don't know exactly what I paid for it, but I'm going to tell you it was probably high threes, low fours all day long. And it uh, top dead center, number one cylinder, put it on there, set it for number one, boom, fired right up. Now I'm not getting spark, and it's it's taking a back seat to every other uh, tractor as far as maintenance and otherwise. And I pulled it in here and I've been using it as a workbench ever since. I will fix this. This is this is gonna be figured out. And very worst case scenario, I have another mag I can put on there if this one is shot. And it's possible. Just because it's a new mag doesn't mean the springs and stuff like that aren't bad on it. Oh, and then there's the loader 400. It picks stuff up and puts it down. And that's really all there is to say about it. I have done stuff to it. I put an alternator on it this year, did a one wire, did some stuff at the dash. Um, I don't know. Really not a whole lot to say about it. Oh, and then there's the cubby hole. You saw this go down this year too. Lots happened this year. Uh, this is a 57. It's not painted correctly. I do have a white grill for it. This grill's in good shape, so I think I'll just pull it and paint it. And then this should be white as well. It's very, very dusty. The chickens have been dusting, so yep, yeah, I'm okay with dust. Not show pieces, new skins on the rear Honda Rancher. Um, Yep, and then this is King Kong Cub, <laughs> 48 style. And this is my 55, 55. I, uh, I put those discs on the back. Some of you guys are gonna remember that from the, what, twice that I snow plowed this year, and I wanted more ballast than just the rear wheel weights. And so I put that on there, and what a difference that made, huh? And uh, for those that watched, but this is the 55, and man, this thing's a screamer and a dreamer makes the dreams come true and there's the the blade on the front with the floating clevis right there yeah nice machine i like it and then i got the 1954 super c bought this from a guy downstate cool dude man he also had i think he had a 682 and the engine had already been swapped in it i should have bought that i don't know if you watch my videos anymore if you're mad at me or what the deal is but if you do i'm interested in that 682 <laughs> uh yeah you just saw this one plow a lot of you people i'll tell you in all honesty i mean it's kind of weird how it works out on the channel the smaller the tractor generally the fewer the views now there was one cub snow plowing video i did it, it was like cub saves the day blizzard you know and i don't know i got like a hundred thousand views on it or something i was just like why why but why ask why and no, I'm not going to say butt dry. And you just saw me plow with this, the old Amski, the genesis of the channel. And, you know, it, it, man, with the advent of the new tractors over the years, this thing's got a rest. And you know what? I don't mind giving it a rest. Um, this did not, this at one point in time had the M&W hand clutch on it. Um, I've heard somebody make the mis huge mistake of saying that when I got it, the only thing missing was the lever coming out no there were internal parts missing as well do not confuse that but uh at an auction chad zimmerman led me to an auction an online auction that had the entire m w hand clutch kit and i got it for all for 50 bucks which you would not do <laughs> if you were just going to go out and buy it but yeah 45 for years i thought this was a 40 because well that's what i was told so i took it as that and then i started checking some of the 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 numbers and letters on the deck and it was like oh 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 and then i don't know if it was h turbo or who it was but he's like uh you might want to check that i think your tractor's a 45 <laughs> it, it is it turned out to be a 45 which believe it or not that's about the pivot point it does make a difference in these letter series because the the belly pumps got a little bit stronger i think the early ones were like 500 psi and then the later ones like your we'll go to the 49 here in a minute are are like 700 so a couple hundred psi difference international old yeller 
you know, and people for years got on, oh, formal yellow, no, but there is an international yellow, and I don't think it's appalling on there, and that's how it came. They must have used good paint because it's tough, and that's just dirt on there, really. But yeah, and then I always wanted a, a little genius three bottom, and I finally, finally got one. I finally did, and you know, this is one of them deals where I'm going to hook this thing up about once, maybe twice a year and use it, and put it away and say I did it you know but, uh, you get like I said in the last video man you get long in the tooth this is not something you'd want to plow a couple hundred acres a year with but dead gone at all them old tough birds they did it 1949 Farmall H this was a viewer's choice tractor I was looking at getting an H at the time I'd only had the M and I wanted an H and there was a narrow front with a um and it was that uh that white in red two-tone kind of paint if i can find a picture of it i will inject it into this video if i cannot find a picture of it i will not and then i saw this one and you guys voted for me to buy this and what a vote it was because i was so happy that you guys picked this one because i was going to let you pick no matter what international front end and the hydraulics on this thing are really the cat's meow and it, it this is just like i say i brush hog with it i spray with it I pull the 510 grain drill with it. This tractor definitely gets used. If I was ever to do anything with it besides overhaul the engine, I would put an international distributor on it versus the Delco versus that. But uh, yeah, this is, she's a keeper. And then there's Princess Leia, another 1954 Super C. Good tractor. I bought this down at the Kroll auction. And uh, I was coming home with it. I just was. I wanted another 54. And I actually sold. I had So at that point in time, I had three Super C's. And the one was a 1951 that had a fast hitch put on it. I bought that up in New York State. And there's a guy actually looking for it. Apparently, it was his grandfather's or great-grandfather's that he bought brand new. That Alvin, you bought the tractor off me. I don't know if you're mad at me. You watch the channel anymore. Look, I, I, I will tell you this, man. This is how I work. I'm not spending my waking days worrying about who's mad or I've upset. I'm not. But he is looking for the tractor. If you're willing to sell it, the guy wants it. I'm just telling you. Um, but yeah, I. so now I had, you know, two 1954s. The concept here was that, you know, I, I, I've got to see, what, 36 disc? For this fast hitch one was going to be on the disc one was going to be on the plow one tractor one implement it's that simple but this is a good running machine here i found out it did have an engine swap it was one of them international um power units and then they put the fire crater pistons in it probably popped it up another five ponies so truth be known i i think the the power unit was about 17 or 18 horse and then with the you know upgraded rebuild in it i think you're probably popping about 23 horse that's about exactly what a super c is when i'm out in the field i'm not like oh this feels underpowered nothing like that so but you know if i was ever to sell it i would let somebody know that there has been quite a bit of work done to this i put a new radiator on it um, new front seal um, i believe i put a new alternator on this as well there's just been a lot of work done to it. If it needed something, I did it. And it's right now. So, you know, the reality is, from the best of my count off the top of my head, I think I have 13 tractors. Unlucky 13. Man, I should have kept that other Super C. I, I like 14 better. And I'm sitting in my truck, and I'm going to reveal my favorite tractor currently on the farm. And it's this one. It's the 1950. <laughs> four <laughs> super we're down to three MTA yep this is and, and really what took the cake for this tractor being the favorite is because to date it's the only one I've peeled down and taken weeks to set up perfectly for me could change in a year because there's at least two more that are going to get peeled down and made perfectly for me. I can tell you two more are getting new manifolds at a bare bones minimum. 
and the 826 is going to get a new oil cooler and manifold uh, and pump rebuild different things like that so who knows what it'll be in a year but right now as I stand here that Super MTA that's my favorite tractor on the farm right now thanks for watching in the next episode we are going to finish plowing with the 400 we're gonna finish disking with the MTA Super MTA and then we're going to call the mulch with the 826 it's a one two three punch bring in the red heat it's the best I got man let's go let's show I'll see you at the next video hopefully we dry out enough we can actually make the video